Hey everybody, I'm Mike Fawcett, Senior Solution Architect with Click's Presales Organization. In today's Click Help video, we'll take a look at using a Six Sigma process control chart approach to setting alerts in Click Alerting. As you can see in this table, we have a simple data model where each row has a date and a measure known as a process percent. This measure can relate to anything, but if you want to use this measure in a process control, it should be a measure over time and a measure that is expected to be consistent. Now, if I open the Insight Advisor and ask, show me process percent over time, we see that we're presented with two types of control chart suggestions, one based on a rolling mean and the other based on a constant mean. Let's take a look at the constant mean chart. Before we talk about what a control chart is used for, let's talk about how it is created. The x-axis is the date. The y-axis is the process percent. The mean or the average of 41% of the process percent is shown in green. The upper control chart limit of 45% is three standard deviations from the mean. The lower control limit of 37%, which is minus three standard deviations from the mean is also plotted. There's this thing called the empirical rule that states for a normal distribution, 99.7% of all observed data will fall into three standard deviations of the mean. So how is this used? In Six Sigma, a control chart is used to determine if a manufacturing or a business process is in a state of control. If the process is out of control, you can then explore the cause and look to improve the process. There are a number of rules to, to determine if a process is out of control, including a data point exceeds the upper or lower control boundary. That's, let's take a look at how we can use ClickSense and click alerting to trigger an alert if the upper or lower control boundary is exceeded. For this use case, which is a data point exceeds the upper or lower control boundary, we will prepare ClickSense by creating two master measure items. The first master measure is the average of the process percent measure. Let's take a look at the second master measure. The second master measure sets a binary flag on each record if the date matches today's date. This way we can set up our click alerting condition to only trigger on new data or basically data that is current as of today. With these two master item measures set up, we can now switch to click alerting. Here we are in the click alerting console and we'll start by creating a new alert. We'll name this alert exceeds boundary and we'll select our click sense application process control example from the source. You'll now see the two master item measures that we created in the click sense application in the add measure dropdown, which we'll add. An important step is to add the drill to dimension, which in this case is our date column. You can see in the preview how this represents the data in click alerting. Here, for example, you can see the record with today's date and its process percent. Let's click on next to set up the conditions that we want to trigger on. For condition A, we will select process percent from the column dropdown. The type will be set, which gives us the standard deviation option in aggregation. And then we'll select greater than from the operator and then enter three for the standard deviation. We're going to create a second condition similar to the first condition, which is the lower control boundary. The difference here is the operator is less than and the standard deviation is minus three. The last condition that we'll use is the is today master measure item. The type will be manual value as we know that the flag will either be a one or a zero. For this condition, we're looking for the operator to be equal to the value of one. With all three conditions set up, we now need to set up the logic of how these conditions work together, which is done in the rules. Here we will create a new rule, which is A or B, and C need to be true for the alert to be triggered. Now we can validate our conditions 
And here we can see that one record already matches the combination of the conditions in the rules. Let's finalize the alert setup. Click Next to move to the uh, schedule page. Here we will leave the default to check for the condition each time the ClickSense application is reloaded. Alternatively, you can set this to a specific schedule. Next, we'll move to the distribution page where we will again accept the defaults of the alert being sent by email every time the condition is detected. Alternatively, you can set up the alert to be sent to a mobile device and the frequency can be changed to only once, for example. The advanced settings allow you to distribute the alert to multiple recipients or share the alerts with others so that the alert, rendered, so that the alert runs under their account which is useful if row level security is in place. Next, we would have the option to select the ClickSense sheet where the alert recipient could navigate directly back to from the alert notification, as well as the option to customize the alert notification itself. After saving this alert, we will receive an email notification that the alert has been set up. And here under the ellipse, we can go ahead and trigger the alert, which simulates that the ClickSense application has been reloaded. After a minute or two, we will receive our alert. Let's take a quick look at these emails. Here you can see the notification that the alert has been set up, which includes a link back to the ClickSense application. It also shows the measures, the conditions, and the rules. And here you can see the example of the email notification of the alert itself being triggered. It contains the same summary information about the alert, and below we can see the data that triggered the alert, which we can then click on to bring us back to the ClickSense application for further investigation. So that concludes this particular help video. I hope you've gained from it, and we'll see you in the next help video. Thank you.